Good afternoon. My name is Clayton Dukes with Logzilla Corporation. Today we're going to learn how to use custom code in Logzilla triggers. This is useful if you're loading external libraries such as Perl or Python and want them to persist across upgrades to Logzilla. We'll also demonstrate how to have the trigger execute remote commands on a Cisco device and collect information from the output and send the results back to a Slack channel. Let's have a quick review of how Logzilla's event management works. Logzilla utilizes the OODA loop, which is observe, orient, decide, and act to take in massive amounts of data in real time, index and deduplicate that data, and then enrich it from external sources of information such as a CMDB or inventory system in order to make intelligent, informed decisions on the next action to take, such as repairing outages, mitigating security incidents, or compliance management. The desired outcome is to be able to pair multiple streams of information down to human consumable, actionable data. For today's how-to, we'll start with installing Logzilla. Then we'll download the sample files we're going to use from GitHub. Next, we're going to create a webhook in the Slack admin portal for use in the demo. And then we'll edit our trigger script and add that Slack webhook URL. After that, we'll create and add our custom Docker image to Logzilla. And last, we'll configure the Cisco device to send events to test it out. So let's get started. Installing Logzilla is done in one simple step, as you can see here. The only prerequisite for installation is Docker version 18.06 or better. Note that all commands in this how-to will be made available on our GitHub account for easy copy-pasting. Now it's time to pull down the sample files for this how-to from GitHub. Once downloaded, extract the files as seen here and change to the directory indicated. The next stop is in Slack itself. Note that you may need admin access to your Slack board for this. In Slack, locate the plus symbol under the channel list and click create a new channel. Next, provide a channel name and optionally make the channel private. After that, add any channel members you want to be a part of the new channel. The next step on the Slack component is to create a webhook. Uh, again, you'll need admin access to Slack itself to add the webhook using the portal on the web. Note that this menu is not available in the Slack client, so be sure to use your browser to access it using the URL shown here. After creating the webhook, copy the webhook URL provided. We're going to use this URL in our script later. The rest of the webhook configuration is optional, but you may want to add a description, name, or icon. Alright, back to our console. Make sure you're in the directory where you were before when you unzipped the files from GitHub. Now we're going to edit our trigger script and add that Slack webhook URL that we created. In Vi, go to line 93. If you're not familiar with Vi, you can do this by typing colon 93 or search for the word post URL. On that line, place your cursor under the H in HTTPS and type shift C to clear the rest of the line. Next, type a single quote followed by pasting the webhook URL we just created. And at the end of the line, be sure to add a single quote followed by a semicolon so that it looks like the screenshot seen here. Once completed, you can save and exit in Vi using the key combination escape colon WQ. Now we're going to copy the script to our script's volume using the docker cp command seen here. After the script is copied, import the trigger using the second command that you see. For the next step, you're going to need to install Docker Compose. It's not really an installation, it's just a script, and it's very simple to do. So you're going to copy and paste this multi-line command that you see here. 
and make sure that once you've downloaded it that it is executable uh, as you can see in the LL command listed on the second part here. Now we're ready to build and run the container. You can do this by changing to the Docker directory and running the compose command seen here. Now that your custom container is built, it's time to add the container ID to the Logzilla trigger we imported earlier. Copy and paste each of these three commands to attach the container to the trigger. Note that these steps could also be done in the UI, but since we're in the command line, this seemed like a more efficient way. Finally, jump over to the Logzilla UI and verify that your new trigger has the associated container ID. Now that everything is built, let's try it out. Click on the more part of the event filters and you can see that our sample trigger is configured to match on the Cisco mnemonic line protocol up down. For the purpose of this lab, you may also want to set a host filter and select the IP or host name of your lab. Next, find your Cisco device being used in the test in the Logzilla UI by selecting the host filter on the query bar. If your devices have a reverse DNS lookup, then you'll see the host name listed here rather than the IP. Once located, select it and click search located at the right side of the query bar. You'll notice on the search results page that there are some items highlighted such as IP addresses, MAC addresses, Cisco mnemonics, Windows events, and others. Clicking on these will bring up a context-sensitive menu of various choices related to that item. For example, if it's a host name or IP address, the menu will display things such as who is, ping, trace route, and others. If it's a Cisco mnemonic or Windows ID, the menu will provide more information on that event along with a URL reference where appropriate. For now, just select the IP or host name of your device and click on it to bring up the menu. Then click SSH or Telnet if that's what your lab device is using. If you're unable to access your device from the Logzilla server itself, you'll need to use a separate terminal in accordance with your company's policies for the next part of this. Next, enter your device username, then press enter on the blue connect button. As you can see here, the username is set as Cisco. When prompted for a password, type in your password and press enter. At this point, you should be on the device. In our case, it's a Cisco router in our lab. Type show run, pipe it through include logg, and that will show you the configuration output for your logging. If you don't have it configured, you can type config terminal, then logging host and the IP address of your Logzilla server, as seen here. Once you add the server to your Cisco device, be sure to save the configuration by typing end followed by write mem. All right, now let's try our trigger. Uh, we're going to temporarily enable the console logging to this terminal using the term mon command, terminal monitor command, so that we can see the events here in our SSH se session. Next, go to the config mode using config term again and then go to the interface loopback zero. We're going to use this interface as our test interface to play with so that we're not shutting down uh, something that we need access to. We're going to type no shut. This will initially bring the interface up. Anytime you create a new loopback interface, it starts in a down mode. So we're going to type no shut to bring it up and then immediately after, go ahead and shut it down again. Once the interface goes down, you'll notice other log messages on the console like you see here. The first event is us actually shutting it down. The next one is a configuration change because Logzilla has already come back in and brought the interface back into compliance based on our trigger. So the last message here is telling us the interface is back up. Now, check your Slack client's channel that we created for this lab, and you'll see both the down event in red and the resulting up event in green from Logzilla repairing it. Thanks for watching. 
I hope this helps you get an idea of all the great things you can do with Logzilla. Logzilla's trigger to script functionality provides unlimited possibilities for IT ops management, compliance, security, and just about anything you could type or click yourself, only much faster. Some of our customers use this feature for things not even related to syslog, such as sending a webhook from Slack to Logzilla that then kicks off a whole series of processes within their organization. Others use it to collect data from other sources, generate a new log back into Logzilla that then kicks off other triggers for even more actions. The sky is truly the limit here, so enjoy. If you haven't tried Logzilla yet, it only takes a few seconds to install. You can get started for free at https logzilla.net slash download. Thanks again.